Hi guys, Ray here from City Fan TV. Hope you're all doing very well today. Enjoying your holidays if you're on holiday during this festive season. Right, I'm going to get straight into it. Today, I'm going to talk about Declan Rice. <laughs> you might be thinking to yourself, why are you talking about Declan Rice? He's not, one, he's not a City player. He's gone to Arsenal last summer. That's dead and done and all that. But I want to talk about Declan Rice. I want to say why we should have bought him. Why I think we should have bought him. There's a few reasons for that. Um, but before I get into that, guys, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Give us a thumbs up, okay? And hit that bell icon so you're know, so you notified as soon as new videos come out. Thumbs up, guys. Thumbs up. <laughs> right, let's get into Declan Rice. Now, look, I, under, I accept, I understand that he wanted to go to Arsenal. Arsenal paid the money. City didn't want to pay the money. City have a limit as to what they want to pay for a player. And Declan Rice was above our limit. We thought that West Ham were valuing him too highly. Personally, at the time, I said we should have offered 100 million. We should have pushed it as far as we could. If Declan Rice was so hell-bent on going to Arsenal, that's the only place he was going to go, OK? We'll come on to the reasons for that in a minute. But if he was hell-bent, that's the only place he was going to go. We should have offered 120 or let it be known that we were willing to offer 120. Let it be known that we we're willing to offer £400,000 a week. OK, you do. this is all sneaky. This is all sneaky stuff, but it's to get those little advantages, all this sneaky stuff. Now, if we let it be known that we're willing to offer £120 million and that we're willing to offer him four hundred grand a week. Now, maybe he would have gone to Arsenal and said, I want four hundred grand a week. City are willing to offer me that, apparently. And West Ham might have said to Arsenal, we want £120 million because City are willing to offer that. OK, that would have pushed, I think, his, his price up a little bit. And it affects your contenders. It affects your uh, opponents. It affects Arsenal. If they had, for instance, if they had to pay 120 million quid down for a Declan Rice, maybe that's a little bit too much. Maybe it was a bit too rich for them. Maybe they wouldn't have paid it, but they needed him. So if they were going to go and then pay 120 million, maybe they wouldn't have been able to buy somebody else they needed. Okay. If they had to pay him 400 grand a week instead of 300 grand a week, that's 100 grand a week that you could be paying for somebody else. That's a 20 million pound player that you could have been paying 100 grand a week to to get to Arsenal. OK, that has an impact, a huge financial impact on your rivals. That's what it's about. It's about getting these little advantages. It's about getting in their head. It's about these marginal gains. And it's a marginal gain. It's not affecting those that really, but it's having an impact on our rivals. And that's what it's about. That's what we should have done if we weren't going to pay the money. Now, Declan Wright didn't come to City for whatever reasons. I think he was, he wanted to stay in London. Okay. He had his heart set on Arsenal. But also, I think he worried about Rodri. How can Declan Rice compete with Rodri? I think even De all right, I'm going to say this. I think even Declan Rice will admit he's not as good as Rodri. And he would have been fighting for a starting spot in that city side. And the way Rodri played last year, everybody's saying, everybody, okay, even. Liverpool fans and United fans and some Arsenal fans, guys who are a little bit um, objective, are saying Rodri is the best defensive midfielder, holding midfielder in the world. OK, he's a level above Declan Rice. And maybe Declan Rice was worried that he wouldn't be able to force his way into the side because Rodri is so damn good. OK, um, so and also Declan Rice, if he'd come, he'd, he was leaving West Ham. He was a big man at West Ham. He's a big fish in a small pond. Going to Arsenal, he would still have been a big fish in a bigger pond, but he'd still be that big fish. He's a main man. He's your record signing, OK? Um, at City, he'd have been another tiddler. You know, we've got Edison. We've got Kevin De Bruyne. We've got Erling Haaland. We've got... Bernardo Silva, John Stones, Ruben Diaz, Kyle Walker, Nathan Ake, all these superb players, as well as Rodri, all these superb players. So he maybe he wanted to be that big fish in a small pond, although Arsenal are a small pond, they're a bigger pond than West Ham. All due respect to my friends at West Ham. But just saying it as it is, having said that, I mean, <laughs> if you were watching the game last night, West Ham are European champions. And they let it be known to those Arsenal fans. Um, 
as they beat the mat. The Emirates by two goals in it should have been three. Should have been three. But maybe Declan Rice is afraid of having to fight with Rodri for a starting spot. And he's doesn't he wants to be the main man and he doesn't want to leave London. And he's had his heart set in Arsenal. All these reasons, okay, fair enough. I can understand why he wants to go to Arsenal. But why do why I thought at the time we should have pushed the ball tight. We should have been willing to spend even 120 million to, to get him. And he's the, these are the reasons why. We'd already got Kovacic, so he was done and dusted, OK? We were, we'd were we already got that extra player in who could play, let's say, a midfield DM-ish kind of role. We'd, we were going to get Doku. We needed you know someone to replace while well, Maris was going. We needed some exciting talent on the wing. Out why Doku was your man. We got him. Fantastic. We were already sorted out with Guardiola. So we had players in each position. We had a defender. We had a DM. We had... And um, a winger, okay. And then for that, we were looking at Paqueta. We wanted Paqueta. Well, obviously the issues with um, his uh, betting scandal, so we we didn't go there by the signs of it. In the end, and we ended up getting Nunes. Now Nunes looks he looked good in bits and pieces. He wasn't good in his last game, and he looks like he could be that box to box guy. But right now he's no Declan Rice. Now I think. Declan Rice could have slotted in alongside Rodri. He could have either covered for Rodri when Rodri was out or slotted in alongside Rodri. So we have these two, I won't call them DMs because you know, we see John Stones playing that role. We see Rico Lewis playing that role. We see Pep struggling trying to get Gavardiol and Akanji to play that role where they step into midfield or play alongside Rodri. And no one has nailed down that spot. And with John Stones' injury again, the worry is, you know, he doesn't want to play Rico Lewis there for whatever reason, even though Lu Rico Lewis is pretty decent at that job. Uh, and John Stones kind of learned from Rico Lewis. It, it was the Rico Lewis role. Um, but he's trying to shoehorn people who aren't good enough at the moment to be the, to play there. Gvardjohn might be that man. He's only, what, 21 years old. In maybe a couple of years' time, he might be that man. But Declan Rice, I believe was ready-made. He was good to go. You open the box, bang, Declan Rice is out and he's doing the business. I think he'd have just stepped in and done the business straight away for Manchester City, okay? He'd have played a lot. As I said, he'd have played alongside Rodri. He'd have played instead of Rodri at times. He'd have, you know, when Rodri was out, maybe John, John Stones would have played alongside uh, Declan Rice or maybe Rico Lewis. It gives us so many options. And I just think Declan Rice was a more ready-made replacement than someone like Nunes. Nunes isn't that man. And we've seen also, we've seen, and it's important to know that Rodri, at times this season, has had bad games. He's had at least three, four bad games. He's been suspended for four games. S -s 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 suspended. <laughs> a bit of Max Headroom. He's been suspended for four games this season, and we've lost them all. We needed somebody... More than competent, we are. I mean, we were looking at Calvin Phillips. I'm sorry, not good enough. We could have sold Calvin Phillips in the summer, we could have pushed him to move, got about 40 million, paid 80 million extra, you know, 40 plus 80 to get Declan Rice for 120. I think that solves that would have solved all our problems. This is not me coming after the fact and telling you this. I said it beforehand, I said I wanted Declan Rice. Yes, okay, I've done videos and said, okay, he, he wasn't man enough to come see and all that, but. I did say in the summer that Declan Rice would be a good backup to Rodri, and he would have played alongside Rodri. I think a lot of the time we would have been able to play three, two, four, one system, or three, two, two, three, whatever, however you want to look at it. Yeah, three, two, two, three. Pep was, has been doing that before, where Gundogan can sl was slotting into the you know set alongside Rodri. Well, now you got Declan Rice, and they can push up as well. So we have three at the back, two DMs, but you know box to boxers. They're not just going to play as the holding midfielders. They're going to pass the ball around. They're going to spray it around out wide. They're going to run with it. It would have been a fantastic system. Um, and the other thing I mentioned earlier on about Arsenal about uh, affecting your rivals, Declan Rice for me has. Overall, I think, improved Arsenal. He's made them more resilient. He's popped up with uh, late goals. He's he's a big man for them. He's an absolute big man. He's a beast for, for Arsenal at the moment. And as I said, he wouldn't have been a beast for City. He might have grown into that beast. But I think he would have made a huge difference to Manchester City. Um, 
as I said, once you there is a bit of looking back because once you've seen what's happened to Rodri this season, those three or four very, very below par games, um, the force, um, oh, you, you can't legislate for Rodri being suspended because he's got such a good, he's actually got such a good disciplinary record. But this season, we've seen him sent off, we've seen him get a bit. Uh, too many yellow cards. Last game against Everton, he was looking not to pick up another yellow card. So he's treading that uh, tightrope very close um, to you know to losing it discipline wise, which is very very surprising. But he's also said himself he's knackered. He's played too many games. He needs a rest, and we've got nobody who steps up to replace Rodri. We've, as I said, we've seen when he's been suspended, we've lost all four games when Rodri has been suspended. And we need a solution. Calvin Phillips obviously is in that solution. He's probably going to leave, uh, going to Newcastle on loan in the transfer window in January. We need somebody who can... I mean, what if Rodri got injured now? What if Rodri got injured for three months, four months, for the rest of the season? What do we do? We're going to have to suddenly change so much. Would, as I said, I think it would have solved so many of our problems if we'd had Declan Rice in the summer. We may not have probably got Matthias Nunes then, but we'd have sold Calvin Phillips. Money-wise, no big deal. No great shakes. You know, but as I said, we should have pushed Arsenal. And if we weren't going to get Declan Rice, we should have pushed Arsenal to the absolute limit. Absolute limit. Because, as I said, it's not just what you can do. It's what you can stop your opponents from doing. That is going to help us in our challenge to win this title this season. Guys, if you're new to the channel, it would be fantastic if you could subscribe. If you can hit that bell icon, you'll be notified as soon as new videos come out. And give us a thumbs up. Give us that like. We'll see you around, Blues.